Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud the mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. This then are the feasts of Passover, on which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led your forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you, you gave away your son. O holy necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault, that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, were thee alone to know the time and hour when Christ, when Christ rose victorious from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, 
The night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your mo mo most holy church. But now we the we know the praises of this pillar, which, glo which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, of fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by shed sharing of its light. For it is fed by melted wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may preserve undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the morning star, the morning star that who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peace, peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the words of God, let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, 
But where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, my body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who, who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace of which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, 
split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when they receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camps of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark and thus night passed without the rival camps coming any closer all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of a fiery cloud upon Egyptian force a glance that threw it into panic. And so he clogged their chariot wheels that they could, not, they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal death. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with water like a wall on their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day, from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses, said, then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot, he has cast into the sea the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. 
Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power, your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders, wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigured the sacred font and the, and the nations, nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by, mer- by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, 
You brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At night fall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part and see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him 
through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy and forever. Let the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. Alleluia. shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. 
They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to move the mic forward a little bit. It's already knocked over one plant. He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. It is with great joy that I say this word. I have a playlist on Spotify called Songs with the A Word. <laughs> um, and it's, it, was, it was developed out of frustration of listening to Christian radio last year because God bless our, our, our separated brethren. I don't know why I, I shook my fist in defiance. Um, God bless our, our separated brethren, uh, but they, they say hallelujah during Lent. We don't. And so a lot of times last year I'd be jamming out to Christian music on Air One or whatever radio station I was listening to, and all of a sudden they'd drop the A word, and I'd be like, I can't listen to that. And I just started throwing all those songs into a playlist. And then last year, last Easter, I pretty much exclusively listened to that playlist. So much so, though, that on Spotify, at the end of the year, they have your 100 top songs that you've listened to. Almost every song in that playlist was in my top 100, toward the top of my top 100. What's the point of this? It's a time of rejoicing. It's a time to say, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. This is the beginning of our celebration. That our celebration, no matter how we celebrate, or what, what context of celebrate, or maybe the celebration's not as big as it's, it, it's going to be, or you, you were planning for, or, or then last year, but to celebrate with those who are with you. To do something that sets this entire week apart from Lent. To rejoice in the Lord's resurrection. I was doing, earlier today, I, I prayed a blessing over both of my, of my parishes from the altar. A particularly powerful blessing. And the way it described Jesus is the Lord of armies. The way it said, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. We say that every mass, right? But what is host? Armies. It says Lord of armies. That, that we believe that Jesus is king. And he is the head of the army of heaven. He is our king. The words we hear in, our, in the, the second reading from Exodus today. That the Lord came and fought for the Israelites. Lord, glory to you, O Lord, God. You who rescued us from the slavery, who conquered and destroyed the Egyptians. Symbolizing baptism, how when we are baptized, that is when we are saved and redeemed and inscribed in the army of God. To fight against the evil one. But an army cannot be effective if there is not unity. I think of, I think of uh, all, a lot of the, the war movies I've seen. Some of them, and you can, you can see this in almost any type of war movie. The one I'm thinking of is actually a sci-fi war movie. It was in space. You know, everything's better in space, right? Um, uh, the, 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 by the way, the priest who read the gospel is one of my classmates, Father Curtis Hecker. He's the chaplain of, 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 of um, um, what, what are you the chaplain of? Cape Mount Carmel, where I graduated from high school. So if you see me lean over, look over to the left and laugh, it's because he's scoffing or rolling his eyes during my homily. So, 
But, but it, there's this movie where you see, and I was like, you can learn a lot about what to do and what not to do <laughs> by these scenes. And the one I'm thinking of, there's this big army and they're fighting on some other planet against bugs or something like that. And the two people that die are the people who are fearful and, ra- and, and rash. So the, the first person that dies, he goes, he goes, ah, I'm getting out of here. And he runs. What happens? He runs into a trap and dies. The other guy is at the front of the pack and he gets up there and he's like, come and get some of this. And he's got the gun and he's shooting. Goo, 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 goo. And he finds himself separated from the rest of the pack. And what happens? He dies. But those who stay with the unit live. Not in the way that people might huddle in safety in a shelter during a hurricane. But they're working as a unit under the leadership of their priests and their bishops. And in the army, their commanders. And they're following orders. Now the church is different than the army. Because our ultimate commander is Jesus Christ. He is the king. But he has given us the church and the leadership of the church. Those who were instituted as leaders on Holy Thursday, the apostles, and their successors, the bishops. And to trust in them. Now, I'm not saying every bishop is perfect. Look at a history book and you will seek contrary to that state, facts contrary to that statement. But I know our bishop is a pretty good guy. And I know that we have some very prayerful and, and God-fearing bishops who are trying to do what they believe is best to protect their flocks. Sometimes it's hard to follow the orders of our commanders. But we have to trust that God is working through them. And that God is redeeming us through his church. Purifying us, sanctifying us through his church. That he is fighting for us. There's a section in one of the first chapters of, the, of C.S. Lewis's Screwtape Letters. And the, 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 the concept of, screw, of Screwtape Letters, it's an older demon writing to a younger demon. And the younger demon has this charge, this young man, that he's trying to keep away from God. And the older demon, Screwtape, says to Wormwood, the younger demon, in one of his letters, our goal is to to make sure that the people of the world do not see the church as we see the church. A church that is a triumphant army with banners marching to victory. But to have set that seed of doubt that the church is just some other institution. And that image sticks in my mind. A triumphant army, a, a conquering army, marching to victory. That is the church that Christ founded. And you and I are a part of that. What a beautiful gift. That is why we rejoice today. That is why we say, Alleluia. May God be praised. For we have been inscribed into this glorious, beautiful army that instead of shooting guns or hurling or or swinging swords, our weapons are prayer. 
acts of kindness. Faithfulness to the Lord. That energy and grace flow from the sacraments to sustain us. Even in times where we are unable to partake in them. I think of many stories I've heard where Christians were oppressed in a particular place. They weren't able to go to Mass because they didn't have priests. Because all the priests were killed. And years later... When missionaries finally return to these places of, that used to be, have Christian faith, it was discovered that the faith never died. I was thinking about, I believe it was, it was in Japan, that, you know, there was this huge conversion of Christians, Christianity to, it hurt huge conversions to Christianity in Japan, and the emperor basically kicked them all out. We got, we got a feast day where we honor the martyrs of Japan. Well, the years later, the missionaries were able to come back in. Those Catholic missionaries were able to come back in. And I heard a story about a man, this missionary, went into this house and started talking to one of the, the, the mother of this house. And she goes, oh, you're talking about Our Lady. And proceeded to welcome them into this back, secret back room that had a statue of Mary. That is the resilience of our faith. That is the resilience of the church that Christ founded. That nothing, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That nothing can conquer the darkness. Con- sorry, nothing can conquer the light because God has conquered the darkness. I'm glad I caught that now, and not after the homily was over. That's what we believe in. That's what we celebrate. That's who we worship. A Lord who came to fight for us. How is the Lord calling you to be faithful? How is he calling you to be obedient? Even when you don't fully understand. Are you willing to trust? Are, do you believe that Christ will save us. I do. And I think and I believe that deep down you do as well. But we must manifest that belief by what we do and how we act. Pray for me and my brother priests. Pray for for the bishops that we can be faithful. That we as the generals and the lieutenants of the armies of heaven may lead you well. As we will pray for you. As we pray for you every day. Because as I've said many times, we're in this together. We are One church, one body of Christ. So, because of the certain certain current situation we are in, obviously this would be the time where we would would bless the water and and bring those who have been going through RCIA into the church. Uh, We, as soon as uh, public masses resume, uh, the bishop is going to designate a day, a particular Sunday, 
where all of our RCIA candidates um, will enter into the church. So continue to pray for them as well as they uh, enter the church a little later than expected, but still with the same fervor and love. We will, however, still bless our holy water, which I will leave here at the front. This is fresh water, hasn't been touched by anybody's hands. So it's nice and clean. And it's about to be even more clean as I'm about to bless it. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly, humbly, bese- let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that, that we may remain faithful to the, to the Spirit whom, he, whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies and also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were, you were to enter upon with, with the human race. And last of all, through, the water, through water which Christ made holy in, in, in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may may this water be for us a memorial of of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been reborn with Christ in baptism, let that, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observances, observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we, we once renew, renounced Satan and his works and the promise, promise to serve God in His holy in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that, so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under pun- suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may, may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, 
and bestowed uh, on us forgiveness of sins, keep us in His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And now, let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For those who are suffering in the current pandemic, that they might be healed, and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness, let us pray to the Lord. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding, let us pray to the Lord. That a vaccine to the coronavirus will be discovered and quickly distributed throughout our state, country, and world, let us pray to the Lord. That our merciful and loving Father will strengthen our faith and trust in his goodness and divine providence. Let us pray to the Lord. That our compassionate Father would touch all affected by the current pandemic with healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Protect those who are serving their country at home and abroad for the petitions written in our parish prayer book, for the intention of this Mass and all the intentions we now pause to pray for. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these petitions and we ask that in your love you may grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that, that what has begun in the, in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring to us the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, and all of those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by their protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that, I, that of, uh, of your whole family, which we, we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that, the, that, that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us 
the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In a humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before for the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, heal me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malignant enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee. With thy saints, I might praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished, you have nourished by this paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I just want to say again, uh, give my, uh, uh, my congratulations, I don't know, happy Christmas, you know, um, Easter, whatever it is, it's been a long day. It's been a long couple of weeks. I love you all. Um, praying for you. I'm actually praying tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I will be praying my mass for the people. Um, so keep me in your prayers, and I, as I will always continue to keep you in, in mind. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God Almighty bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia.